Hello and welcome to 3 Minute Game Pass, I'm Nathan, and no, this is not me announcing that Elden Ring is going to be on Game Pass, I wish. But Elden Ring is all I've been doing ever since it came out, and having played almost every class thanks to the power of ADHD, I've come to a single conclusion. Astrologer is dank. What other class can dab on enemies via the power of tossing dingleberries? But what if you want to be as dank as Astrologer? Impossible? No, extremely easy. So here's a guide from the start of the game to make your Astrologer godly in under an hour. An uh, hour-ish, depending on your luck with drops. Warning, there will be location spoilers in this video. Nothing major, and since you're watching a video that's a guide of a game, I'm assuming you expected at least a little bit of spoilers, but I've done my best to keep it as low-key as possible, but hey, just warning you. All right, let's get into it. Step 1. Pick Astrologer. Obviously. For your gift, you want the Golden Seed, as it will give you an additional flask. As Astrologer, we're only going to use about 2 health potions at any given time. The rest go to magic, because remember the plan is to not get hit and to kill via dingleberry throwing. So the more to split, the better. After the initial tutorial, I'll have to do some basic intro stuff. I'm assuming you haven't played the game yet, so I'm actually going to go over it really quick. First, after you touch 3 Lost Grace, a waifu will appear out of nowhere and offer you both a horse and the ability to level up. Very nice. Second, after you touch some more bonfires, you should warp to the church and a new and improved waifu with an impressive hat will give you the summon ability. Summoner is crucial to playing astrologer. While you're tossing out your dingleberries, you will need something to soak up damage. Apparently Miyazaki played Dark Souls 2 and thought, hey, this game doesn't have enough summons in it. I'm gonna add more in my game. I thought that would be impossible based on how many are in Dark Souls 2, but here we are. Summons are basically spirits that you can uh, summon with mana in specific locations in the game, usually before any boss fight. Again, these are the meat shields that are going to make ranged classes like you excel, so we need this. The last one is if you rest at a bonfire outside of the main area, original waifu will return and offer to take you to the round table. This is essentially the hub area slash firelink shrine of the game, so you will want that for a specific reason later. Alright, enough intro crap, let's break the game. And before I go into gear, I guess I'll explain how to play besides just saying dingleberry over and over again. You are a ranged class. Your goal, never get hit. Your shield, summons, your weapons, dingleberries, and other stuff will get there. As such, your main strategy is to dodge and kite enemies. So keep an eye on both your stamina and magic. Casting will use both, so don't burn yourself out too much so you can't dodge roll. Blocking is for cowards, but you basically can use it in an emergency or against super aggressive enemies. Lastly, your dingleberries only shoot directly in front of you, so if you are turning around while it's charging up, you will just launch them into space, which I guess you are an astronomer, but that is less effective when it comes to actual combat. Okay, that's basically it. So how can we get powerful? There's three ways. One, better sticks, two, better shields, and three, a stylish hat. Let's jump into that. All right, so first we're going to need a new stick. Our default stick is not great. Luckily, if we're willing to do a run into a classic Miyazaki poison swamp to the east, we can get a busted one early. So first off, you're going to ride north, grabbing the free golden seed on the way because you're going to need them. And then you head east along this road. If you ever see a point of grace, you might as well activate it just in case. Eventually, you will jump over a fiery fence and you will be in hell swamp full of terror terrible, horrific monsters. No, we're not in Florida. We're still playing Elden Ring, so we gotta keep going. You will then keep going east until you find this grace point and the road turns south. You then go immediately south for two more points of grace and until you find the grace titled Kalid Highway North. Once we're there, we are going to head east into that big bowl of poison that you can see off in the horizon. Now, if you go straight across from the merchant, you'll see a big tower down there. That is our destination. You can't just jump down there. You'll probably die. So you need to go around and then head for the tower. Once you get to that tower, you shimmy over to the far side. You'll find something in stain, the meteor staff. Now, the staff does two things. It buffs purple class spells and has an S scaling for int, which is completely insane this early in the game. It means all of your int is going to buff it. It does come with a downside, though. First, you're going to need a little bit of int to wield it. But most importantly, you cannot upgrade it. So it's very good early on, kind of like the Drake Sword in Dark Souls 1. But you will need a replacement eventually. Don't worry, I have one in mind. While we're here, we're going to grab a good spell from a basement. 
if you point this way from the tower and just head straight forward, you should find it. Once you go down there, this will have the Rock Toss spell, which is a purple spell that goes with our new stick. Rather than pathetic dingleberries, this shoots mega dingleberries, also known as rocks, which absolutely shred bosses when combined with the staff. It is very mana hungry though, so keep that in mind. It is not going to be your bread and butter. So what's gonna happen when this stick starts sucking since we can't upgrade it? Well, this time we're gonna head south. Now we're in another area, and once you get to here on the map, on the lower area, you will find a pathetic, quote, mini boss who doesn't even have a big health bar. She is just, it's just sad. Just put her out of her misery. Destroy her with extreme prejudice and you will get the Demi-Human Queen's Staff. This staff, unlike the Meteor one, can be upgraded and it will be upgraded by you. Upgrade this as often as you can and then check to see how it compares to the other. Once it gets better than the Meteor Staff, swap it out and you continue your godly ascension. Okay, we have our sticks and it's only taken like 20 minutes. What's next? Shield. Okay, let's be real. This starting shield, I think it might be a joke. 45% physical block. Why doesn't the shield just hurt me and get it over with. So we're gonna need a better one. Unfortunately, that's gonna require farming. Fortunately, this is easy XP at the beginning of the game. When you go to this camp at the very beginning of the game, which you absolutely cannot miss, and it has the map of the area, you can see these guards have golden shields. Stylish, pretty, and 100% physical block. Yeah, you can probably guess what's coming. Murder them with extreme prejudice until they drop it. It may take a while. It is not a super common drop. It might put us over my hour estimation. You can summon into this camp for the record, which will make it easier. It also is a great way to get a bunch of XP early and to try out your new stuff. If you do get it, congrats. You now have the brass shield with 100% physical block, which will make things a lot easier in case something gets too close. Okay, now we need a hat. This hood just ain't doing it for me. I wonder if Miyazaki added a completely broken mage hat literally feet from the starting area. Oh, he did. In this catacomb, which is just a little bit north and west of the church, there are these gremlin gargoyles from Gremlins to the new batch. They cause bleeding, jump everywhere, and are basically tiny, obnoxious twits. I hate them. However, what you want is to wear their head as a hat, so murder them with extreme prejudice. Pro tip, in this catacomb, there are five hidden away in the back room, and if you attack the fire columns, those columns will go away forever, so you don't have to worry about them anymore. Farm those boys like a combine. So why do we want this hat? Well, first it establishes dominance over the gremlins who definitely deserve that, but also it gives, what, what is that? Five int. Yeah, five levels of int in one incredibly hideous hat. I can feel the overpower happening as we speak. Okay, so let's quick take a quick break from being OP and instead go over a very brief leveling guide. Don't worry, this will be very quick. So Astronomer is easy to play because basically I only care about two stats, Int and Mind. Now Int increases your damage and is required to equip the best sticks, and Mind gives you more mana with which to cast spells with. However, if being an entirely glass cannon who gets one shot by the bosses is leaving you seeing a lot of floating screens, you can dump some points into Vite, although you probably don't need a ton. Also, a few points in Endurance can help you wear that incredibly ugly and heavy hat, as well as provide stamina for spell casting and dodging. Lastly, it's worth noting that Dex does increase cast speed, but I didn't really find it worth investing if I'm being 100% honest. And that's it. Pump Int. Become the wisest man alive. And if a stiff breeze kills you, it's your fault because you got in the way. Time for some spells. So Glintstone Pebble, aka Dingleberries, will be your doom shotgun of this game. It is your workhorse spell. It is always good and it is cheap to cast. However, you definitely want some more stuff to deal with the tougher enemies as the game progresses, so here's how you can get them. First, you're going to need to journey to here on the map. This is a secret little grotto with a disgusting plant in the front yard and a hidden cave underneath. Inside, you will find the mini boss Pumpkin Head. He's not too hard. He very clearly projects his attacks and with summons, you can distract him. So just be careful. Once you kill him in the back room is a spell teacher who is kind of a waifu minus that hat. Regardless, she has some interesting stuff at first, but you can get her to sell better stuff by quickly heading over to the east and jumping atop this busted building. Here you will find a royal scroll which if you give it to her will expand on the stuff she sells. Keep an eye out for further scrolls as you play. I'm not going to actually tell you in this guide what to buy since a lot of fun of the game is exploring and I want you to do that, but I will say try out anything that looks interesting and see what you like. However, we only have two spell slots, which is not super OP. What are we going to do about that? Well, this game doesn't have the attunement stat like Dark Souls where you can just slot more spells in, so you have to add more via an item, specifically the memory stone. There are two easy ways you can 
get one. There's one sold by an NPC at the round table for 3,000 souls, but the other is actually easier. If you journey to here on the map, there is a little mini puzzle, which I'm now going to spoil. You've been warned. It tells you to kill three wise animals, which are these three turtles. There's one directly in front of the building, one to the left of it, and an invisible one in the puddle outside. Kill all three of them, climb to the top, get your memory stone, and now you can equip more spells. Prepare to rain hell. All right, let's sum this all up. You have an S stat stick and a backup stick. You have a great shield. You have an int gremlin hat. You have a ton of spells and at least three spell slots to use them in. And you've only had to kill a mini boss. I'm going to say you're doing pretty good. For all the other stuff, feel free to equip whatever armor you like as long as it doesn't make you fat roll as this will help you survive should you screw up. However, with all this gear, you're probably going to be one or two shotting basically anything in the first area that isn't a boss or ridiculously tough. So enjoy your completely OP astrologer. And that is all for this this video. Thank you so much for watching. On my normal channel, I do reviews and Game Pass related content, so if you're interested in that, feel free to sub or check it out. If you're not, that's cool too. I'm just glad you watched this video. We're a very small channel, so a comment and a like goes really far for me, and I appreciate it, but regardless of what you choose to do, I just hope you have a great time in Elden Ring like I am having. It's amazing. I love it, and I hope you do too, so have a great day.